Yeah, they. Hey, welcome to the Go Big with Leanne show. And it's Friday morning, and I'm super excited to have a good friend of mine, uh, Miguel Johns. He is right here in Wichita with me. Very, very, very successful, um, inspiring young man. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how old he is, but he's young to me. <laughs> so that's all that matters. And today we're going to talk about the roller coaster ride of success. He's got a lot of experience and he's kind of making a, a turn in his, in his business that he's been working on for years. And we've worked on a few projects together. So I thought he'd be a great person to have on the show for anybody that's, you know, considering diving into entrepreneurship or, you know, diving into their dreams, whatever it may be. So, Miguel, let's um, just do a quick introduction of yourself. Yeah. Um, so like Leanne said, my name is Miguel Johns. I uh, met Leanne probably about four or five years ago just through the health community here in Wichita. Uh, my background is in exercise science. I got into exercise science because I've got a long family history of chronic disease, mainly diabetes and heart disease. Um, I was fascinated also by the sports performance side of things, being a former athlete, college athlete, um, and it just one thing led to another. Um, I started getting interested in healthcare and what we could do um, specifically in the form of prevention and reversal of chronic diseases that were metabolic at their core. And uh, now I'm here today running a, a digital health startup and a, um, a few other things, um, but just really fascinated by the human body, the human mind and everything we're learning about it at a rapid pace in today's age with technology. Awesome. And I, I love, you said my favorite word, preventative, um, because, you know, that gets so lost in our um, world today that, you know, a lot of us just kind of ignore our health and, oh, if it's if it's not showing up, I'm going to keep my blinders on and just <laughs> forward. And, you know, I always tell people that the results are invisible until they're not. Yeah. So, you know, preventative maintenance for a lot of people is, is challenging to do because they're not necessarily experiencing negative impact from their choices yeah. yet. But then when they show up, then they're at a loss because then they're just relying on the doctors and nothing. I love doctors, great people, yeah. but they don't have a lot of time in the office now, the way the billing system is set up and everything to really educate and work with patients. Yeah. And so I just love that you, you know, it's always fascinating to me of like, how does someone become interested in, you know, basically saving the world in a particular area, you know, like, and I know you have a family history of diabetes. Yeah. And so it was personal to you. But still, I just think it's amazing that as a young person, you just made that decision. And you're like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so was there a like one point in your like, personal life where you woke up and said, you know, I have to do this? Or was it kind of a gradual um, decision? Yeah, great question. And it was really like a, uh, almost like a waterfall of events. And I was kind of going down the street and it really started, I was playing college football at, at Indiana State and I moved into this house with a few different roommates. One of them specifically became a really long-term friend of mine. All of them had become long-term friends, but one in specific, uh, Zaki gave me this book called The Strangest Secret. And I had before this never read any type of books in school. I would fake my book report. It was all about sports for me at this point in my life. I was a 19 year old, 20 year old kid. It was about playing football. Um, and he gave me the strangest secret. And that was the first time I really started looking at my thoughts. And it was all about um, you become what you think about. So if you change your mindset, your whole life is going to change. And I was going through difficult things at that time because I had gotten injured in football. I was sitting out and um, I was really reflecting on like what my life is going to be. Um, that book fell into my lap. I read that and it led to one thing after another, which changed my whole mindset about what I could accomplish in my life. Now, I do have to give credit to a little bit about my uh, my genetics and upbringing. Uh, my mom is uh, extremely hard worker. We are actually Hispanic in background. And so the the stereotype of the Mexican hard worker is not a stereotype, it's real. Like I watched my grandpa, I watched my mom, like they are extremely hard workers and I naturally have that. Um, and so if it wasn't working on technology, I'd be busting my butt doing something else naturally. So I do have to give some credit there. Now, um, when I started picking up these different books and they started changing my mindset, I start, was able to connect some dots and then I added that into the degree I was getting, which was exercise science. And so multiple different things kind of came together um, to lead to me starting that first business. And another big reason I took that leap is because I measured the risks. 
So a lot of people are very scared and they're they're worried about failure and things like that. And anytime I start something, I always put failure first. So what's the absolute worst thing that can happen if I fail at this? And being a college kid, it was like, well, nothing. You're already broke. You're already living in a land of shack. Like you already walk everywhere. So nothing's really going to change. Um, but I always tell people, if you're going to start something, if you put out those failures, you realize they're not as bad as you might think. Um, I mean, a couple people might say, hey, what happened to that project? And you might feel bad about failing about it. But that's really the, the worst um, that happens. So a lot of those accumulations, a few uh, mindset shifts and a, a few fortunate um, inheritances from uh, my family led to me getting started. That's awesome. And I love that you said measure the failures because a lot of people are just so afraid to start that they're like, and I always say, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, and that's that's just great the way you frame that. Because, yeah, as a college kid, you're like, well, can't go much further down. Yeah, And so, you know, uh, start with a risk that you're comfortable with, yeah. you know, and then kind of build from there. Because, uh, you know, for me, like if someone would ask me six years ago, Leanne, will you be doing Facebook lives or public speaking or just name it, you know, anything I'm involved in now, improv, I would have never, I didn't even know what improv was six years ago. So, you know, the reason why I, I wanted to title the show Roller Coaster Ride, because I think a lot of people, you know, in a job, it's probably more linear, you know, and you kind of have a planned out pattern and you, oh, okay, the next up crease would be maybe become a manager. But when you're an entrepreneur, it really is a major roller coaster ride. You're going to have your your highest highs and your lowest lows and the twists and the turns and the upside downs. And I want to quit. I mean, how many times have you wanted to quit? I mean, have you uh, had any? About a million. <laughs> a million? Yeah. And, and, you know, from an outsider looking in, I would have never guessed that. And, yeah. you know, people say that about me too. They're like, oh, Leanne, you, you know, you have the most upbeat, positive attitude. You'd never quit. I'm like, oh, if you were inside my <laughs> head, <laughs> I've wanted to quit, you know. Oh, yeah. lots many, and lots and lots of times. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, for those people that, you know, what would you say? you know, about the roller coaster itself. I mean, how do, yeah. you, how do you deal with that? I know mine's yeah, super question. important. And I love that book. I read that book too, The Strangest Secret. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. I think that book's so important because it just gets you, it gets you looking at your thoughts. Um, yeah. I'm a huge believer, like you're going to have negative thoughts no matter what. And right. so, it's, yeah, so there's give and take in that, but um, it just gets you looking in that direction, which is so powerful. Um, so the, how to deal with the roller coaster, that's an amazing question. One of the first things I did is, um, I was able to relate a lot of adversity back to my um, sports career. And so growing up playing football, uh, there's, there's a lot of adversity in that sport. And really any sport that you do, there's going to be a lot of adversity you face in games and practices with injuries and things like that. And so I was able to relate a lot of it to that. But I also have invested heavily in myself, in my mental well-being, not to where I'm always positive, um, but to where I understand that ebbs and flows are a natural part of the process. So what I see with different entrepreneurs is when they're in a negative mindset state, when they're feeling down, when they feel like nothing's going anywhere, they think that's unnatural for somebody who's successful. So they see someone like us online and they're like, well, they're always smiling. So for me to be feeling negative right now, this must not be for me. And I obviously should quit. Um, but the reality is it's a natural part of everything. Um, you're going to feel those lows, especially if you're trying to do something big. The bigger thing you're trying to do, the deeper the lows are going to be and the bigger the failures are going to be. Uh, so that's why I, I can relate it back to what you said with somebody who's got a regular job. They're not trying to do too much. So the lows aren't too low. And so they kind of stay in this medium space. Uh, but as an entrepreneur, you're trying to do something way up here. And so when you're down, it's way down there and then you go flying back up. Um, so teaching myself that that was very normal, a very natural part of the process was one of the most important things I feel um, to get me where I am today. And I've got a long way to go. I've got many, pri I mean, hopefully if I'm so fortunate to live a long life, I'll be doing these ebbs and flows for a very long time and I'm still getting used to them. Um, a low will come and I'll see my mind start taking over of, well, told you that wasn't gonna worry all these things, um, but I've gotten better at recognizing that, putting myself back and centering myself again and just watching it as it's happening and seeing that as a normal part of the process. Yeah, that's perfect. So, you know, myself, I've always been an employee, um, but on the side, I did entrepreneurship because it just fascinated me, but I was in the military for 21 years, working healthcare. And so, yeah, I had to get used to those um, 
lower lows and higher highs, you know, on my, what I kind of still call my side gigs, um, Mm -hmm. you know, exploring this world. But it's, you know, it's fascinating that a lot of us are really afraid of those feelings. And so we're like, we're almost embarrassed to say you had a bad day, but it is, it's, it's a natural part of life. But the key, like you said, for myself is becoming very um, aware and go, oh, I'm not feeling so good today. You know, maybe I need to go uh, meditate. Maybe I need to go exercise, but don't judge it. Just go, hmm, interesting. Am I, am I supposed to be learning something from this? Yeah. And just question, question those feelings that are coming up because we got to, um, we got to get to know ourselves well, because what works for Miguel, what he does to kind of deal with his lows may not work for me. So we have to find that balance of on the roller coaster and life in general. <laughs> Let's yeah. just admit it, guys, especially right now. Life is a big roller coaster ride. And um, we're entering into, well, none of us in our whole lifetime, I don't, regardless of your age, whoever's watching this, have never experienced anything like we're experiencing now. So a lot of the things that we have been used to doing may never come back. Um, but I see it as just an amazing um, opportunity for innovation and uh, so it's so many possibilities of that. We can really take advantage of this time, to, yeah. especially healthcare, to make things better. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about your project now, um, yeah. because, I, you know, I've um, I've watched you through things. And so just. I've always been just amazed of the things that you're working on. So tell us, you know, kind of what your current deal is. And I, I think you had a recent kind of big deal happen. So if yeah, you want to share yeah. that, um, that's great. And let's, you know, just talk about what you're doing now. Yeah, definitely. So um, started King Fit about five years ago. And that's where I met Leanne um, through King Fit. Um, we built a few different health technologies, all really around diabetes. Um, one of those health technologies we recently just sold. Uh, so extremely proud of that, extremely happy for that. And what was great about that experience was when we launched that technology, it was it allowed us to partner with multiple different diabetes organizations. And all these different diabetes organizations had different what we call therapeutic models. So they were taking care of the patient in different ways. But at the core, we knew that with somebody who had type 2 diabetes, it came down to Um, their mental health, their um, nutritional health, and their physical health. And so although all these different organizations were attacking that problem from different angles, that was at its core. And so we learned so much through that experience of having these health technologies on the market. And that created that in that learning process created our our product that we have today, which is diabetes care. Um, So we've got diabetes care in both English and Spanish and where we've really focused on innovating on the front end. We know we can reverse diabetes for somebody um, if they join our program and if they follow everything that we're telling them to do, um, we'll get them off their most expensive medications. We'll get them off the insulins and the, and the other injectables um, through the lifestyle change. But where everybody was struggling in the diabetes space was building trust with the person with diabetes, engaging that person with diabetes, motivating and inspiring them because these people are just being hammered with so many ads and messages and devices and medications, we had to figure out a way to di- differentiate ourselves on the front end. And that's where our Facebook pages come into play. We've got diabetes care in English and diabetes care in Spanish on Facebook, where we're giving out so much free content. So people, no matter where they are in on the spectrum of trying to make that change, they can come to us, build trust with us, get value from us, Um, without ever having to give us anything. So without spending a dime, without having to talk to us, they can start going through that process on their own. And then when they're ready, they can reach out and we've got more resources and programs for them at that, at that point. But yeah, so today we've got diabetes care. Um, We're working very hard on it. It's still a part of King Fit. So I know a lot of people reached out to me asking if we had sold King Fit. We did not. We just sold one of our technologies. um, And now we've closed down that path of these different avenues of revenue that we were going after. And we've went 100% 100% on diabetes care, which is direct to consumer, helping people get off their most expensive medications is what's at the core. So you, you'll you probably still have diabetes after working with us. Um, you'll probably still be on maybe a um, an oral medication. But if you're on insulin, if you're sick of taking it multiple times a day, um, if you're not seeing any improvements, we can help you get rid of those more heavy hitting medications um, through lifestyle change. And, and that's awesome because I think... Uh... I mean, every for every medication you're on, there's like 
369 possible side effects or some yeah. crazy number. Something and, crazy. Yeah, something. And a lot of things that we can do for ourselves are just lifestyle changes. So, I, I mean, I'm a health coach and I work with people, you know, on a daily basis and I get phone calls that their diabetes is out of control. And so, and I know, you know, they start off strong on what the doctor recommends and things like that. Um, and then they just, you know, life gets in the way, they hit a road bump, they have their own roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. So what are, what, is there something unique um, about the way you guys are handling things to keep people engaged? You know, did, are you gamifying it? I mean, that may be a word that not everybody understands, but, yeah. you know, there's little things that we can do, especially with technology to really keep people engaged. So have you guys kind of found like maybe kind of the magic potion to really um, get people to buy into their own health, you know, with, you know, by using technology to get them to stay plugged in? Yeah, def- great question. Um, so the great thing about social media specifically, Facebook, I believe, has now over a, a billion users. And so it's more of a, for us, we know that not everybody's ready to make the leap. We know that a very small percent of people if we get them started on a new program today, we'll be on that program a year from now. So it's just the, I mean, the, it's a numbers game. Um, right. So for us, we've seen our ability on the front end to cast such a wide net with our content that this small percent of people ready to make that change is a very large number of people out of all the seven billions of, of people on planet earth. Now, that being said, our goal is then to nurture the people who are almost ready to move them into that that front part where they're ready to go. And so our program is very automated, is very technology based, and it relies heavily on the end user being ready to take full responsibility, be ready to say, you know what, I've been sick of this for five years, I've been thinking about making this change for 10, it's time now. We're relying on those people to be our users. And our magic is in reaching those people and taking the people who are almost there and nurturing them into when they are. And so we're never gonna change somebody who doesn't want to to make that change. We're never gonna convince somebody who's not ready to be convinced, which I see when these these other healthcare organizations we worked with, that's where their biggest struggle was. They only had a small amount of patient population that they could reach out to, and only a fraction of them were ready to make that change. And so they considered it maybe a failure that they only, they got such a low percent to have results. When in reality, that's the numbers, that universe, that's a universal pattern. And so using social media, we can reach far more of that small sliver of number of people who are ready to make the change. And so our results seem a lot better, but really we're just better at reaching a larger amount of people for low cost. And that's where our magic sauce is. And so we're still experiencing everything you as an individual health coach may experience or a, a clinic who has a few health coaches may experience where most people aren't going to make the change. Most people aren't ready. Most people are just going to stay how they are. A very small percent are and another percent after that are getting ready. And if are, if we can do a good job at nurturing those people who are getting ready to the point where they become independent, self accountable and, and do it on their own, then that's success for us. Yeah, that's awesome. So I love that you're casting a wide net. So then you're not, I mean, you're located in Wichita, but your business is, is unlimited. Yes. Yes. So I, and I love that, you know, my show, the tagline for my show is empowerment through connection. And so your, your business concept just plugs right into that because, you know, we, we can't help people that we can't connect with and, you know, love or hate social media. It's a beautiful tool to really, um, I mean, I have friends on Facebook that I've never met before physically, but I know, like, and trust them. And, and so if you're really good at storytelling, which I know is another thing that Miguel's yeah. really passionate about, um, when you tell a good story and you can um, give a good cause and a good reason why people should make change, because you have to have that buy in and yeah. people need yeah. to, you know, like kind of trust the brand, trust the person behind the brand and then just have enough in their playground, you know, enough things that they can grab onto and find value for themselves and diabetes is um, a huge, a huge problem in our society. And so do you also, um, I, I believe your program is designed for people that aren't diabetic yet. They're, they're borderline, you know, cause I have, I get phone calls every day. Well, the doctor said I'm borderline. <laughs> or, 
Yeah, that's not a good thing because you're going to be diabetic. Yeah. Um, so would your program, would your Facebook page help those that are on that borderline stage or people that just want to, you know, make sure they never even get to the borderline stage? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're working most heavily with people who have been diagnosed and who are on an injectable medication, usually insulin. Okay. Um, the reason being, those are the people who are usually in the most pain, like you mentioned early right. on. Um People are in their comfort zone until it's too late and then all the pain hits at once and then it's um, it's a catastrophe at that point. So most of the people who reach out who are ready to go have been taking insulin shots for um, years now. They're, they're just sick of it. Um, but our, our program and our content definitely can help anybody who is, is just at risk through um, genetics and their family heritage. Um, if they're borderline, they're pre-diabetic, they can definitely come to our page and, and get the information they need to improve their health as well. And there was another thing you mentioned right before this, the getting the buy-in and using social media and creating the content that builds the trust. That's absolutely our secret sauce. So um, when it comes to changing people's lives, we're not doing anything special. We're doing what all the top preventive medicine institutions are doing, which is changing how you eat, getting you to move more, getting you to practice stress management. That's the basic stuff. What we're very, very good at is we consider ourselves um, more of a, a creative studio than a diabetes company. Um, so we're really focused on creating entertaining, engaging content um, and a lot of it so that we can use social media, cast this huge net and somebody who's going about their day can interact with us in a small amount of time, build trust um, and, and just enjoy that experience. So that's a, that's a huge part of what we do. And that's really our secret sauce is is the fact that we're more of a creative studio than we are a, a diabetes company. Yeah, and I, I love that because I can tell a difference because I've been around, you know, uh, diabetes education for a long time. I'm like, mm. oh, <laughs> it, it's factual and it's good. But, you know, in the day and age that we live in where people are used to being entertained and instant gratification, yeah. um, if a company doesn't change and move along, a company or a cause, if you don't move along with that creative nature of how things are moving, then your message is going to get lost. And that's yeah. the thing because there's a lot of really powerful messages getting lost now. Yeah. And so I, I love, I love the spirit of, of the younger generation. And it's just, I mean, because you guys were raised with technology yeah. and, and those things, you know, I wasn't, but the, my, my boys are 31 and 32. And I think they're in that little gap where technology really wasn't anything yet. Yeah. Um, so I actually, well, my son, my, younger son's a pilot. So he, you know, he's coming, that's a different kind of technology. Yeah. But I think you kind of, you're close to that age, Brad, yeah. but for some reason you decide that you want, you saw the power of technology and I see it too. I just can't figure out exactly how to, you know, like there's so much, there's so much we can do in the world with yeah. technology, but still with that personal touch, because I am a, firm believer in, you know, still physically meeting people for coffee when I can and having yeah. that, that, you know, personal interaction. But when you can't do that, there's still so many beautiful ways to reach people with this, you know, the messages that we have that, you know, to just empower people yeah. uh, from their home, because a lot of now a lot of people aren't wanting to get out as much. And so again, we're going to see a new trend of, you know, different things becoming more popular. So definitely. Uh, and to piggyback on that a little bit, one of the biggest things that has propelled our company, unfortunately, has been COVID. So before COVID, digital health was kind of just like a, uh, uh, was a trendy topic. It was frosting on the cake if your organization could have it. Um, but now it's an absolute necessity. And we've been building a digital health company for the last five years. And for this to come now, it's everybody always says the successful entrepreneurs always say there's a sprinkle of luck in there every now yeah. and then. Which I'm a firm believer as well. Of course, the harder you work, the more luck you have. Um, but this was a huge, huge lucky thing for our business and our industry because it is just streamlined digital health to the front. It's absolutely necessary. You can't survive in healthcare without telemedicine anymore. You can't survive without digital remote patient monitoring. Um, and it's all because of all because of uh, um, COVID, unfortunately. 
Yeah. Well, you were, um, so now you're the smartest man in the room. So all, <laughs> all your friends that thought you were crazy for developing all this technology and all the time and energy and heartache and sweat and blood, yeah. and you put into it, they're like, just go get a job. Now you can kind of just rub it in just a bit <laughs> if, if you choose to. Um, because you know. you're, yeah. I mean, luck, but you put the work behind it. So you've been yeah, doing sure. work all along. So um, that's, you know, it's always good to do whatever you can to stay just a couple steps ahead of, yes. of, of what the world's doing because you know then you're going to be that smartest person in the room so, <laughs> and I, I just love the creative edge that you guys do with your material um because it does it makes it fun entertaining and that's what's going to keep people you know on track and yeah and, and we want to you know your goal and my goal is to help people you know connect with themselves and, and make healthy choices for themselves because when we feel better we do better yep and when we do better that's just a huge ripple effect that, you know, we'll never be able to measure the impact of improving one person's health um, could potentially impact thousands yes. or millions, you know, because we're all connected in some degree, you know, somehow. Yeah. So, um, so I want you to just kind of um, let's, we'll wrap it up with some final words of, of wisdom of entrepreneurship. You know, if someone is sitting in their chair right now, thinking about diving into their big project. Yeah. And they're scared to death. Um, what you know? What would what message would you um, give to them? Yeah, um, it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. Um, you're going to have to sacrifice lots of time, um, and it's it's going to be very difficult. So there's like we talked about in the beginning. You're going to have lots of lows that come with the highs. Um, that's yeah. It's a, I like to reverse it sometimes because people are just focused on the highs and, and canceling out some of the lows, but. Um, it's very difficult, but it is the most fulfilling um, thing that you could ever do. I mean, the I think about my long-term happiness and how I felt over the last five years, and I feel so content and fulfilled because I'm able to watch myself grow slowly. And I feel like when people have that desire to do something within them, they know something's trying to grow out of them. And when they don't, let that thing grow, it makes them unhappy over time. And so even though you're gonna face these difficulties and it's gonna be hard and you're gonna have nights alone, you're gonna have to sacrifice things, over time, the fulfillment that comes with that makes it all worth it. I wouldn't take back any of the months I went out without payroll, any of the bills I couldn't pay, all the walk and all the um, confusion and not knowing uh, because I can look back, I can see the growth, I can measure it personally, even if nothing else goes right, I can see how I've changed as a human being through this experience. Um, and that makes it well, well worth it. Yeah, that's awesome. And on to add on to that, I want to um, just remind people that it doesn't mean that if you have an idea and a dream, you know, in your heart and soul that you have to quit your day job. No. You can keep your day job as long as you want to, you know, forever if you want to yeah. and, and do your um, passion project, you know, part-time, full-time, yeah. all the time, you know, two or three hours a week. So I think a lot of people get caught up in the idea that to be an entrepreneur, that creative spirit that they, oh, well, it's like, you can either have a job or you can't. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you can have both. You can, you know, the best of both worlds have yeah. that little bit, uh, that security of a paycheck coming in so you can build your dreams. And then, but, you know, just listen to your inner guidance. And the other thing, and I'm, I know you'll agree with this, is make sure you have a really um, like a mentor partnership um, surrounding you. Like I, I joined the Hive um, as a community, community member, hive.com. There's all kinds of uh, working groups that you can join, even if you're not in Wichita. There's tons of great organizations in Wichita, but some of them are nationwide. But find um, a group of entrepreneurs to yes. plug into because that's where your ideas are really going to get juiced up and you're going to yeah. see some of their mistakes and some of their successes and you learn from watching others. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yes, very true. And it's it makes you just feel more comfortable and at home to be around people who understand what you're going through as well. And so if you've got a good group of entrepreneurs around you, um, they're going to be struggling. They're going to be crying in their closet too. And so as long as you know, there's two of you crying and it makes it much easier. <laughs> yeah. Cause the people at my, you know, at my job, they don't understand. They're like, why, Leanne, why do you do all this? You know, yeah. so I can't really talk to them. I mean, I'll share some ideas with them, but they just, just don't understand the passion that, you know, I can't help that it's inside yeah. of me. You yeah. know, it's just part of me. And so, and like you said, I would not feel alive if I wasn't pursuing that, that piece of me. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, we just, you know, tap into your greatness, 
surround yourself with other people that, you know, see that greatness in you yeah. and then be willing to do the hard work, roll up your sleeves and, you know, and, and get ready for the roller coaster ride of your life. The roller coaster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're mentally prepared for the roller coaster, if you've got good support or people around you, and if it's not people in person, books are a great place to find entrepreneurial stories um, to relate to others who have gone through everything you're going through. Um, but yes, definitely the hardest part is actually doing the work. Um, so after you've read everything, after you've mentally prepared, after you've planned, after you've got to actually start typing, you've got to pull up the Facebook Live. You got to order the microphone. You got to say some words into it. Um, you got to take the action. Yeah, you can't just get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. Yeah. You, you got to at some point get off the bench, get into the game, play hard, and learn from your mistakes because you don't yes. learn if you're sitting on the bench. So exactly. exactly. Uh, so I truly appreciate you taking the time this morning to to be with our audience because your message is so powerful and your story is just amazing. So we will continue to watch you. And then, you know, anybody that has questions, you know, pop them into the comments. We'll get back with you or um, go to his personal Facebook page or he's um, the website and just learn about more about it. Because the more that each individual that came to this live today or listened to the audio learns about diabetes because everybody everybody on here knows someone that's struggling yeah, with this. Yeah. So share this information, share this live, or just share the website with your friends and family and um, care enough about them that, you know, they may not like you in the moment that you share, it, <laughs> <laughs> but you can plant the seed. So share the website, yeah. share the message. Um, because again, we all want um, to feel good and because we can do more good. So yes, definitely. Thank you for having me, Leanne. All right. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.